like when we would show up at Washougal, um, I'd say nine times out of ten, I'd I'd get beat there um, against Josh. He was he was always really good there. Um, I was good there too, but he was just better than I was. Um, and we'd leave there. I'd get my ass chewed by dad, you know, on the way home. You know, got beat again, you know, by Josh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. I, I peaked at like 14. <laughs> once once we went pro, it was like this guy. And then uh, I was just kind of chased him after that. That was uh, what shaped us. I mean, it was like, I would say when we were, by the time we were like 11, 12, like the, you had the pro class where everybody would drop what they're doing and go watch. And then I'd say like our 80 classes, everybody would drop what they're doing and go watch. Because if Ryan wasn't there, I would go race the pro you know intermediate pro class on my 80 be yep. like to look for competition but then when you know when we'd show up at the same place it was on that's, that's so funny cool. boom Woo! we right. are live look at that guys we are we're not on uh uh we're not in studio m we're on location and if you look at behind us there we are in the coliseum that's right. This is where they had the 1984 Olympics. Not only that, the uh, they did the iconic Memorial Coliseum was here, which was originally called the Super Bowl of Motocross in 1972. Uh, my guests, Josh Hill and Ryan Villapoto, correct me if I'm wrong at all in uh, my motocross talk today because we know that that's not what I do, but I try. <laughs> well, well, you can try. How are you boys doing today? Doing good. Two absolute legends on set right now. Uh, Josh Hill, you're actually racing today. <laughs> yeah, funny enough. Okay. How did that happen? I scored enough points to be here in Supercross and then uh, had to go and hit a couple of nationals just to try to squeak a couple of more points to make sure I was in. And yeah, I'm here. So explain to us why you had to go do some outdoors and how the points uh, came from uh, indoors to outdoors and so how we're here. Yeah, for this championship, uh, this three-round playoff, it's the, they take the top 20 uh, amount of points from Supercross and Motocross, and they combine them. So whoever's in the top 20 who scored the most points between both of those series gets a direct transfer straight into this race. And then uh, there's 10 more spots where they have uh, an LCQ with two extra spots to get in. So it's kind of cool. You know, big payout all the way down to 22nd in the championship. So pretty Million cool. dollars on the line today for you. I, I don't know dollars. about me, but <laughs> I think I'm mathematically out of that equation already, but there's still a good chunk of change for uh, for a dude like me. <laughs> and then, guys, listen, there's going to be sounds going on. We're literally in the stadium. They are setting up for today. There will be sometimes music. There will be sometimes uh, flamethrowers. There will be sometimes maybe a motorbike. Rup, rup, rup. And we have four-time champion Ryan Villapoto. Poto, it's uh, good to it's good to be it's good to be in your presence. I saw you kind of gazing out over the track this morning, and that uh, that looked um, it, it it looked like you were enjoying. You were kind of soaking it up. What was going on in there? I mean, the lighting's just perfect right now. But no, it's it's L.A. Coliseum, um, very iconic place that we're kind of super cross started, and uh, we're back here. It's been a long time since they've raced, so um, I'm excited to see what, you know, this championship come down to the end. Like you said, there's a million dollars on the line for the 450 class. There's 500,000 on the line for the lights class, um, and we have three winners in each of those classes that are eligible for that, you know, for the championship. So three 450 riders are eligible, and three 250F, um, 250 lights guys are eligible for their class. So it's winner take all tonight. Who do you think, like, you know, both of you guys, like, uh, and always, as we got Brittany here, as always, Danny here, hello, stepping hello. in, guys. I have a video of uh, Ryan Villapoto that I'm going to hit the screen with right now, too. Um, this video is of Ryan when Monster Cup, I believe this is when you won the million dollars. Yeah, 2011, I believe. That's right. Yeah, good times. And how was that process? It was three races. Yep, yeah. So uh, Monster came up with the idea of running um, out at Sam Boyd Stadium in Vegas. It was a uh, million dollars on the line, and they had three motos um, at the time. So it was three 10 lappers. So it was a total of 30 laps, three gate drops. Um, best of best winner at the end of that was 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 the winner of a million bucks, and it happened to be me. That was a good feeling. <laughs> it was a good That's feeling. A really yeah, it was good, good feeling. feeling. Yeah. I believe no one else has done that, right? Um, so they had changed up a little bit. So I was the f so the very first year I won it, and then they weren't expecting that to happen right away. So they brought in they brought in um, the Joker lane, they called it. So it was actually a slower lane one year that you had to take at least one lap per moto, um, and it really made it a lot harder. So I they believe Marvin won it one year. Um, 
And I believe there's three of us that have won the million. Tomac, I think. Tomac, yeah, but they had changed some of the rules or the track. You know, they brought in the Joker lane is what they had called it. So, What's the Joker lane? Like I said, it was either a slower lane. What, one or two years, it was a slower lane that you had to take at least one lap um, of the 10. And then one year they brought it, it was actually a quicker like a, it was a faster line around, and you, but you had to do it one lap. You couldn't do it two. Um, you could plan it on any time where you wanted to take it. One, lap uh, two from ten, you could have take, taken it, but it had to be within those ten laps. I forgot it one time. What happens if you forget it? <laughs> you're out. Yeah, it's That's done. It? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. You're, it's done. Yeah, your millions, it's over. Just if you miss the lap. Yeah, if you miss that lane, uh. yeah. And then correct me if I'm wrong, we're not doing the Monster Cup anymore? I don't believe so. Um, from a fan, from an outsider, I believe kind of like this Super Motocross World Championships to me is there's a million dollars on the line. It's it's kind of similar, and I, I, there's three rounds, so maybe this is the new the new Monster Cup. Yeah, it kind of seems like this is the way the sport's going. Yeah, uh, it's they're stretching it out. You know, before it was three, uh, it was a million all in one night, and now it's kind of a little bit more build up, a little more lead up with uh, three unique rounds. You know, and they kind of mixed motocross. One track was kind of a hybrid. Supercross, motocross, and then you know here this is basically a supercross track without whoops. So this like behind us here, this kind of is a supercross track without whoops. And I was asking you earlier, this track feels like you got to get out in front first. It's if you're not out in front, it's hard to overtake. Uh, I think it, they built the track good. You know, it's pretty, it, it's wide, it's fairly wide for a supercross track. There's some good options. Uh, you know, the whoops. Usually, if, if you're good in the whoops, that's, that's pretty much where you plan your passes every yep. lap. So not having that, um, you're going to have to take a few more risks to, to make some moves. But I think it's going to be passable. They've got a couple split lanes that uh, will probably change like throughout the course of the evening, like what line's actually the better line, because we've got to split those columns uh, going up and out of the peristyle, they called it. You know, that's like an iconic section in, uh, in Supercross that they would have once a year back in the day when they had all the the supercross races here in this coliseum so we split that two lanes there and then two lanes through the sand so it, that'll be kind of interesting to see how those play out because one line will be faster and then that line will get rough and then you'll have to figure out you know how to maneuver the other one guys like you, you, th th there's been a lot of kind of changes this year and 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 you know who who is who, who are we looking like who, who are the top three kind of people in the 450 that have that you guys are looking at right now that that you guys really think will um sit out front today uh, i mean it's it's we've kind of had um between charlotte um chicago and and now um la coliseum you know we have we have jet lawrence you know just had an amazing outdoor season 22 and 0 um you know we kind of figured that's what we were going to see at charlotte but then you know the ro revolt the roles were reversed chase went 1-1 one, one. um standing on top of the podium so and then bad race by chase at chicago right so but kenny was able to come up so honestly those three are are really close and i think that we're now that we're here in the la coliseum more of a traditional supercross track like josh had said separation is going to be is, is it's not there's not going to be a big separation here so between chase kenny um you know and uh and jet i think it's gonna be very very close racing and as the track gets hard pack this is la i was told this dirt is or was X Games dirt. So if that's true, it's going to get hard pack. You know how hard and dry and, and um, slippery it gets. So it's failed to do a better job putting water on it, but still it's going to be, it's going to get nasty by the, by the end of the night show. So um, before I go back into uh, motocross talk, this is X Games dirt? That's what I was told. So I was told, but don't who, quote me on that. Whose house does it? it get, whose house does it is hang it out with? From, it just <laughs> came from Ventura. Just waits. Twenty. I, I heard about twenty miles away is what Dirtworks said. Is wherever it was sitting. Wow. So oh. Don't quote me on that. I don't know if it was. I'm assuming it's very similar. If it's not X Games dirt, regardless, it's going to be Blue Groove. <laughs> I didn't realize we had that much dirt in Ventura. <laughs> you didn't? Well, there I knew was, it. There was there was just the the, the quarter air and then. The freestyle motocross, oh, it would have been mostly the BMX. Oh, they probably had to find some more, yeah. But and what about the rally, some of the rally uh, stuff? Oh, like, there you go. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like crazy. Like Vegan X Games. Yeah, yeah. wow. That's I mean, what that's I was told. Happened. Don't, don't quote me on this, it. This is, he, he's the next guest after you guys, and this is where everything happened for him. Yeah. This is like, he's coming in puffy The ghost today. ride. Oh, yeah. the ghost yeah. ride. Three, everything, three, like, three. it was like, the Deegan era was all kind of uh, uh, around here. It's, um... It's 
it's guys it's beautiful to look at down there isn't it it really is no it's it's um it's really cool to be in this stadium and then obviously over to go over and check the peristyle out and and um at where they're running the track up through and they have all the all the memorabilia up on the wall and and um, that's all right just put that there yeah sorry sorry buddy um i'm gonna stab somebody <laughs> uh, but no it's really it's it's awesome to be here it, it really is uh funny moment espn called jet justin bieber of motocross what are your thoughts on that josh ryan I, I guess that's pretty accurate at the moment. You know, he's young. He's uh, he's like that's not style. a diss, right? Nah, he's uh, Beeps is cool. Yeah, yeah, Beeps is cool. Yeah, I think it's pretty accurate. He's the superstar of our sport right now. He kind of just jumped up out of nowhere and and just became this superstar. And uh, it's like you definitely there, there's two. You, you hear the the you know the young girls like go wild for two riders, and that's Who? Hayden Deegan and Jet Lawrence. That's cool though. We need mm-hmm. a future. Mm-hmm. Like as you two, <laughs> like like you're still riding, but like you, we're getting older. You're retired at you were retired at a child age. <laughs> it's crazy. I look at your age. You're younger than me, and every time I'm like, God damn it! But you're you retired at 26 or 27 or something yep, wild yep. like that. Does that do you feel like it's been a long time since that moment has happened? Um, yes and no. It, it definitely. I look back at 35 now, and you know when I was in it racing, like. Um, it felt like it was going slow. Um, people, you know, guys would always say that were older that had been in that position, like, you know, enjoy it while you can, because it's going to, it'll be gone before you know it. Um, and they're hundred percent true. Um, I think the older I get the, the, I, when I look back, like to, at my career, um, you know, I totally stoked on how it, how it turned out. And I think that, um, having somebody like jet coming in i think we need that you know his story from starting in australia moving to europe europe here to the states and now being that he's i mean he's probably he's the most marketable rider in our sport right now um espn just wrote up that story of of him being justin bieber of motocross and and i think that's what we need that's what our sport needs is is more outside influence and and you know like let's let's face it like guys like myself um I wasn't very marketable. I was marketable because I was winning. Eli Tomac, not super personable, marketable, at, 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 but he's marketable because he's winning. Um, Jet has totally reversed that. You know, he's he's fun character. He's he's happy go lucky. Um, I think that really brings in I think outside sponsors when that time comes. I just think it's it helps us grow. It's a good foundation for what our next step is. Yeah, because let's go back to like the earlier days of. Uh, when it was McGrath or Bubba or Chad Reed or these people that were all kind of rock stars in their own mind and there was outside, you know, there was like you, you're on Jay Leno or these kind of bigger talk shows yep. on like a regular occurrence and it it, it it seems like that last 10 years has that it's been a, a bit of a crossover and even talking about that now, like, you know, you're nearly 10 years retired. You're still in there, Josh Richards fucking awesome um (laughs) but 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 it's like that that change of the guard right eli tomac he's not going to be racing that much longer no you know it's like even this year coming he'll be back next year but it's like is he going to and it's it's uh it's uh, and then you know chase what a year that guy's had that Uh, guy kind of like i i i I would have not had him in you know uh, winning the championship this year he fucking did Mm -hmm. and then he's here today and there's those point system the, 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 there's there, there there's been that big come up and it, it would be cool to see you know it's today it's with jet and then Kenny too like Kenny's comeback this year and and that build up has been really awesome to see too it has no I think it's 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 what the sport needs and I think with the the way that Feld and and pro motocross have come together and and built out this point system you know when they started at Charlotte it was it was there was 25 points on the line we went to Chicago it was 50 points on the line and now we're here in LA Coliseum and there's 75 points on the line um, so being that it's escalated like that it's it's kept every one of these riders in the mix I mean I know mathematically there's there's more than three riders that could win but you know not very often do we go down to the last round in a championship setting where we have three riders that's basically win or take all like that doesn't happen ever in our in our sport so they've done a good job with with sorting out the points and figuring out how to bring it down to the last round and have three potential winners and then here in LA that's right you know it's like it, it's the mecca of it is right down the road there in Anaheim that's where you guys always start your season, but yep. to be back here, and I'm pretty sure, like they 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 said, it's going to be pretty full in here tonight. That's going to be badass. You know, that's what we need. We need to bring it back. Yeah, right. I feel like all, 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 old school's coming back a little bit. Yeah, I mean, this you know, you watch all the old X Games stuff, like in the height of it, and this place was full, and like 
if this stadium's full, like it's gonna give me chills down on the line just because this is my first time racing in the stadium. But I mean, me as a kid, I had every race on VHS that I could possibly find, and this is like, this is so iconic for our sport. So, have, I'm have, have you raced in the stadium? I have not. No, n- never will, and you know, haven't yet. So. <laughs> So, Josh, what do you do? So, you're racing tonight, of course. What are you doing, like, after this show? What are you going to go do? Uh, probably go get some, go get a little bit more food, relax. I don't ride till 2 o'clock. Okay. And then uh, just get ready for qualifying, the yep. race. And then, uh, yeah, then after this, I got to go try to be a freestyle rider again at the Imagination event. I leave Monday, so just. Oh, wow. Yeah. Back to back. Yeah, it's awesome. Though. Is right. there a uh, pre-race kind of ritual? You got a soundtrack that's going to be pumping through your head? Like, what's going to get you fired up for this one? Uh, not really. Like, uh, I don't know. I just, I try to stay calm when I go to the line. I just like to hang out, relax, try to just stay in, uh, stay in the flow. Like, my, my brother's my teammate now over at Team Tedders, so He'll, he'll pull up and uh, he'll probably pull up late. I'll harass him <laughs> a little bit, mess with him, and then... Uh, I feel like you'd be really good at kind of like talking some shit around the line. <laughs> it's it's nonstop, but uh, I, I think I've only beat my brother twice this whole year. He's just been whooping me and like, oh, it's not from lack of trying, man. Like <laughs> the, my success this year, like, you know, I got s- success. Like, oh, I got sixth at the last Supercross and it's pretty good for, for me being pretty old and I attribute all of that to me just trying to beat my brother. And, and on that night, he got third. So, yeah, it's <laughs> incredible. Though. Well, that was like, one of the questions we had of how is it like working with your brother? That was one of the questions. Uh, I, I gave up working with my brother. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I've been working on beating my brother. Competing <laughs> yeah, with your yeah, brother. Yeah. He, he don't listen to me. Family and businesses. We've been told that. It doesn't work out. <laughs> yeah, not always. No, but it's awesome. I mean, like, my brother quit racing and became a sheriff's deputy in the county that we that we lived in. No way. Yeah. And uh, up in, yeah, up he in Oregon. Yeah, b- he bicked his hair and head and just <laughs> carrying around a nine mil. He's like, he was like 200 pounds. Like, <laughs> he, was, he was pushing like 275 bench press. He was, he was trying to be, uh, be a little bit of a hard ass. And then, yeah, we got him back. He's back racing. He had to, you know, he had to drop a little weight, limber up again a little bit, you know, start stretching. Yeah. But uh, he's just like the kid's so naturally talented. It's crazy how how good he is. Like, um, if he if we just get him just just strictly focused on on Supercross, dude, like he could still be battling for wins. But uh, he's he's funny. He's he wants to be a rancher as well. So he he just bought 300 acres out in Wyoming, and he yeah we built him a Supercross track. He's got a little compound out there, but. Yeah, I don't know. He's wanting to. He's been watching too much Yellowstone or something. I think this is a good segue right here. Uh, you guys filmed Hill Brothers two, and uh, I've got that right here that I'm gonna put up on the screen right now. Just and cut to the end where PH crashes. That's that's. Oh, I just saw <laughs> that one. Where he, doesn't he do it twice? Like, don't yeah. they put him back up and then he just goes down again? Explain yeah. how Hill Brothers two kind of came about. Where are we right here? This is uh, where me and Justin grew up in Yonkala, Oregon. So this is uh, basically right when I got my first pro contract we moved up to uh kind of the middle of nowhere in oregon to just build a the most insane moto compound we could come up with and uh like this used to be a full outdoor gnarly motocross track that we'd ride in the summer that's why there's so many trees it'd kind of keep it shaded and now that uh, racing isn't like my only thing i do i kind of do some free ride stuff and and videos i've kind of just turned it into like a fun mountain bike style free ride course kind of like a slope style course for dirt bikes is what we were we were calling it you know just i'll just go out there with a chainsaw and take you know dying trees cut them down and turn them into jumps and you also had like a few of the other crew out there was axel out there tucker out there uh just axel came out for this one so uh we did we did this the week before uh, i have this event out at my parents property every year called the big hill jam and uh we have like a, it's a part of like the national hill climb series. That's a round of that. We have like a big pit bike race. And then the whip contest we have is it's next level. It's uh, we pretty much had everybody from X games pull up plus like five or six more like East coast kids. And the dude from Australia that were, uh, I guess a little less known, but can throw with the best of them. And well, they're Jacko Ray's kids, right? Some of them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, they're that, lunatics. That's, yeah. That's a little <laughs> A whole different breed. Explain to us too, like you know, we're watching Hill Brothers too. You had the first one, but like what I noticed too with, with, uh, with you over the years, you were kind of the first person I feel like that took your motorbike to the street 
and you started doing stuff in theme parks and like you really kind of went outside the realm and did a couple of those big loops like where did those ideas come from i uh, i just seen uh so for that kind of stuff i don't really ever take a gas bike out on the streets um it just draws too much att- like negative attention but i started developing uh electric dirt bikes with this it, first is this company called alta they're based out of the united states up in san francisco and uh I was just like, man, there's so much untapped riding that you just get in trouble for on a dirt bike because as soon as you rev it up, like people from five blocks away are going like, to kind of be up in arms. And then you get an electric bike and you can be going like 60 miles an hour and without making a noise. And then somebody just sees you flying through the air and they're like, well, that was cool. You know, it's just a whole different reaction. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of what led to uh, me doing like some street riding. I think we have PH yeah, on screen right now. We're, we're here to the main part. <laughs> <laughs> what happened here? Uh, well, what happened here is PH already threw the whole crew out of the side-by-side earlier this day when Axel <laughs> went down. So we were going to do a, a sunset shoot at the top of the hill, and I was a little worried about PH flipping my buddies uh, side-by-side going up this steep hill. Yeah, as but, naturally as you are. But PH is a good dirt bike rider. Oh, yeah. no, he really is. No, he rips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's not a bad dirt bike rider, so him falling down riding up this hill, really, it wasn't expected, but I think Axel dusted him out. And uh, he ended up hitting a rock and didn't realize that it was like a drop right there. Yeah. By the way, those are blackberry bushes in the in the in the thorns that are on them. They're like they're long. Like, it's like that's what he pulls. Up. Yeah, yeah. It's like him. getting he's stuck in barbed wire. He's in a lot of pain right there. So we hear your brother's ripping him out. Yeah. So he's he's coming. This out gets now. this video just gets better though. It's the video that just keeps on giving because he's you're about to get him out here. Still got the stoke. Yeah, yeah. Get the stoke. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what a legend! Yeah, and um, yeah. Look, he can't even get out of it. Cause it's so <laughs> it, it's got a hold of his pants and his shirt. And the harder you pull, the harder they pull. You know, <laughs> you just get wrapped in him. He's got some. Yeah, he's pull, pulling. He's pulling it out here. He's <laughs> he's acting tough. He's got cuts everywhere, and now he gets back on the bike. Shirts off. Shirts off. off. <laughs> this is where he, I think the second time is where he gets where it gets him in the face and he's got blood running yep. down his face. So he, you know, he wasn't going to let this hill beat him. You know what I'm saying? Like we're already almost to the top. Like we could have just went, you know, right back up. Yeah. But, but PH was like, no, no, give me that bike, dude. Yeah, bike. yeah, no, he's back on. Yeah. He's, he's probably some some sort of concussed, maybe. Uh, I do think it was a pretty soft landing. Other than I think the thorns caught him pretty good. Yeah. So so should we not put him back on? <laughs> Oh my god. He just bounces right Mike. back in. So there. I'm watching all this ha- you know. Oh, this time he's <laughs> in oh, <the> sound. <laughs> So I'm watching this all play out through Instagram, oh right? And I don't see the whole lead up that he actually <laughs> fell twice into them. I only I only saw this the second crash where they pulled PH out of out of the briar bushes and he's all bleeding out, but I didn't know he fell first into it the, at the first time and then we picked they picked him back up. And he forgot to pull the clutch in or start it, and it fell back over the other way. Yeah, he uh, he didn't even get his hands out this time. I think uh, he, <laughs> what we cut out of this is he was going for try three, and Axel had to to plead with him pretty heavily to to just you know chalk this one up, chill out. I wasn't sure if he wasn't just going to take my bike and see how many blackberry bushes he could get rid of. Yeah, he was that. Uh, yeah, he's really in there. Oh, so that's that's. <laughs> <laughs> So you don't want to go off the the track on this course here. Yeah. Well, you see, their trees are briar bushes. Yeah, it's uh, there, there's some obstacles. Out that's there. Uh, that's Hill Brothers Two. If you guys want to finish it, go to the Monster Energy YouTube page, and it's uh, Hill Brothers Two by D- Dirt Shot. Guys, you're both like from similar areas. Yeah, yeah. No, we we grew up together racing. Um, Washougal would be my home track um, for the national. I was about three hours north. Josh was was uh, that's where we'd kind of meet up a lot. Would be Washougal, yeah, close. Yeah. For, how, since we how were, were like you go- eight years old. Like yeah, so years. you guys raced against your whole lives. Pretty much, yeah, 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 pretty much. Um, you know, hell of an like when we would show up at Washougal, um, I'd say nine times out of ten, I'd I'd get beat there um, against Josh. He was he was always really good there. Um, I was good there too, but he was just better than I was. Um, and we'd leave there. I'd get my ass chewed by Dad. You know, on the way home. You know got beat again you know by josh <laughs> you know so I, I peaked at like 14. Once, once we went pro it was like this guy and then uh, i was just kind of chasing him after that 
Yeah, was your dad yelling at you like that too? Oh yeah, I mean that's what <laughs> that's what shaped us into yeah. the yeah. men we became with yeah. our uh, our battles growing up. You know, there was a couple other guys in the mix too, like Justin Keeney. Yep. Um, he was a little bit older than us, but like that was uh, what shaped us. I mean, it was like I would say when we were by the time we were like eleven, twelve, like the, you had the pro class where everybody would drop what they're doing, and go watch, and then I'd say like our 80 classes everybody drop what they're doing and go watch because if ryan wasn't there i would go race the pro you know intermediate pro class on my 80 be yep. like to look for competition but then when you know when we'd show up at the same place it was on that's, that's so funny cool. when um what, what when was both your first years riding back then was it was it still uh 250 would have been the, the like the intro in did you guys go into the 250 class around the same time um, I was, I did the last three nationals in 05, 06 was my first year. Yeah. Then I did the last three nationals in 06 and then 07 was my first year. So okay. I was like one year younger than Ryan. Yep. Danny, what's going on over there? Oh, just hanging. I mean, you're looking at some champions here. You're a champion yourself. Are there any like champion questions you want to throw at these guys? I mean, I think it's just, it's, it's fascinating to kind of like hear the background of it, you know? And I think knowing that like, there's so much money on the line, I think it's like, I want to know more about like what goes on a little bit between like the rivalry, right? Because the mm. top three guys who are kind of competing for that million dollars, are they going to be, is there going to be a little camp rivalry going on? Well, I mean, I think we saw some of that at Chicago, right? Um, Jet, uh, Kenny, you know, um, all over Jet, riding his coattails. Jet, you know, pulling his big brain moves, as he, as he said on the podium, um, you know, trying to, I, you know, I, I guess affect the points in a way um championship points um meanwhile it didn't actually work out it only affected the the points of of the actual night um not the actual championship points so i honestly i think a lot of these guys you know the last thing you want to do is is have at least for me um is have some major beef um with a rider and now we have three guys that are in this championship hunt so say you start beef with say chase and jet well now kenny's the odd man out that's watching everything happen from behind or you know like he has there's no uh you know there's no pressure on him you know so they let them duel it out and fight it out like dogs and you know it's easier for like kenny right to to sit behind and watch all that play out so but as as racers i mean I can't speak for Josh, but I, I think like we don't want to have like r good, hard, trustful. You know, being able to trust a racer is is, is the best way of, of racing for me. That's the how I went and I'd had the most fun racing against somebody like I'll use Jason Lawrence for ex example. You know, or Justin Barsha. Like it, it does suck to have to really watch your back every turn if you got somebody you know breathing down your neck because you, you're not expecting what's going to happen next and somebody it could just completely blindside you. So having that utmost respect for these guys but being able to race them super hard bar to bar you know running them high but not not you know deliberately taking them out i think that's the way that's what we see i think that's what we're going to see tonight is just true hard racing I, I think that uh i think it's just going to have to see what happens as the night plays out right i mean if there's a shot that one of these guys can take i think any of them are going to take it for a million yeah. bucks you know and uh with how fast this track is uh it's going to have to be a pretty aggressive move, you know, if there's contact involved where, uh, you know, some of the older supercross tracks, I think we'd see more like, you know, deliberate takeouts because the courses were a little bit slower speeds. But here, I mean, we're probably, I'd say on average, like five miles per hour around this whole track faster than a normal supercross track. Wow. Mm -hmm. So to, to do some, you know, dirty moves, you can have to do it at speed and it's going to be kind of gnarly, but it, uh, you know, a million bucks is a million bucks. Let's talk about some of these features. I believe, do we have a video that we're going to play or we're just going to talk about these features? All right, so I heard earlier, Josh, you were saying that from yesterday, from when you first practiced, that these triples are now going to be a little different. Uh, they, yeah, that we rode yesterday, did two sessions, and uh, they added a, a roller, like a three-foot single to the rhythm section right after the start. So I don't know, like, as much run as you have into it, it'll be interesting to see if anybody tries to quad onto that tabletop um, because you, you could, I mean, he could honestly be in like third gear by that point, which third gear goes pretty far. <laughs> uh, so yeah, then, uh, I mean, these things are almost 70 horsepower. That's crazy. You know, to the rear wheel. That's so 60 wild. something probably. Yeah. 
Yeah, I heard. I, I don't know for sure, but I heard like some of these bikes are get, they're getting up to like sixty f- something miles an hour in second gear. That's <clears> crazy. Like so, it's pretty. I wild. flipped a I flipped a, a sea doo that last summer going sixty miles an hour. <laughs> How'd that feel? Not good. No. I went over the top. Sit down. <laughs> you have to sit down. Okay. And I was standing and I was like bombing and I hit a uh, and I and I hit a I hit a uh, I. I <laughs> <laughs> I hit like a like there was like a water bump and I hit it and I was like all right I could like and I should have just probably jumped off but I tried to manhandle it and it bucked me up and it had me like standing like a cut like a stand like a like a handstand up and over it was fu- it shook me shook me yeah, I bet yeah 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 hitting the water at sixty is like hitting the concrete <laughs> and then, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna uh, I I I I didn't I didn't I stopped pinning the seat at that point okay um. I, they, they did a celebrity. Yamaha did a celebrity mm-hmm. yeah, yesterday. yesterday, and uh, it was cool. You know, there was some some old to old timers out there. Kerry Hart was out there. We had your buddy, right? He's just we, we yeah, that's what I was getting sh- to. Okay, yeah, a little shoulder injury. <laughs> yeah, so I get a call yesterday. <laughs> Bays, who's the bassist and producer for Machine Gun Kelly, he's like he's uh, big into riding Harleys and big into bikes, and he rides a little bit of dirt bikes. But he's like, yeah, no, I'm gonna. He's coming down to do the ride, and I and and. Uh, and uh, he gets dressed up, and I'm looking, and yeah, there's some other people that it's they're they're, they're taking it easy, and I'm he can ride a little, but he he did one lap, good around, second lap, good around, and then disappeared on the third lap. And on this table here, he rode up, he caught a little bit of air, but then basically hit the knuckle, and then bounced to the flat, and then popped his popped his shoulder out, and ended up the hospital. Based did this? Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. It's rough. It's a rough sport. <laughs> it really is. I mean, there's a lot kind of on the line there, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, for all, you know, like, yeah, it's it's interesting to see, like, okay, we get these celebs out to, you know, yeah, a little bit of time on a dirt bike or, or you know, anything, but to get them on a supercross track and to have them ride up some of the takeoffs, like, they're way steeper. I mean, we're sitting up here on the fourth floor, but, like, if you get down there and you've never actually walked on a supercross track, like, <laughs> the shit's really steep. Mm-hmm. And if you're not, you, you know, like, if you're not, that verse with the clutch and the throttle together like it could be a problem and we seen some of that yesterday with some of the celebs how about um how about the sand we got a, we, we got a sand line in here yeah we do yeah it's uh it comes down out of the out of the uh peristyle there and like josh said it's a split lane so once you go up to the peristyle it makes a right and the li- there's a little straightaway and then it starts your option line as you make the next right hander which then comes down into the coliseum so you kind of got to pick on you know where you're going to end up and like josh said it's a lot of the guys yesterday were running the inside line. It's going to get rough. It's going it, the sand actually is pulled back up a little farther on the inside line. So like 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 it's going to get rougher, and then guys are going to start looking for different lines. So I think that's going to be a good passing opportunity point. Um, you know, supercross. We've been having sand for probably the last I don't know twelve years or so. Um, it's it's basically in almost every supercross track so that's that's what new supercross is is with a little, little bit of a sand section is it beach sand or desert sand that, that stuff feels like beach sand yeah <laughs> no and it, no it makes a difference though it does actually like people are like oh how's the sand i'm like well some sand is like big bigger granular granular sand and it's heavy and it yeah. like, kind of packs up this stuff i walked in it yesterday it doesn't it'll it doesn't form anything it's always a different line when you ride through it right so yeah. it's it's always different Pillowy, yeah. Like it pillowy. wants to, it wants to suck your bike into it. Yep. Yeah. Where sometimes, like the desert sand, it kind of packs and, and and yeah, like like Ryan said, lines form and and you don't have to like hang off the back as bad. So when you're kind of inspecting the course, right, and like for a lot of the riders, what is there like a few things you remind yourself of, like minor mistakes you don't want to make, uh? or like areas of the track? For, I mean. Man, I w- I've been doing this for so long. It's kind of like I get out there, I assess the course. Yeah, I mean, sometimes there'll be a section where that, that's giving me problems after qualifying where I go out for the, for the heat race and I'm like, okay, you know, like I got to make sure I clean this up. And then, you know, sometimes you go to a track and there's so many rhythm sections that for the first couple of times out, you have to really remind yourself of the combination. Like, okay, through this section, I got to go three, three, three onto this tabletop, you know, like, or, or there'll be a second option that is just as fast that, you know, 
requires you to go two in. You know, it's like you're doing math while you're out there riding a little bit. Mm-hmm. I think the good thing about with with when when we show up to race or ride at a track like this or any Supercross track is is the dirt work crew is the same crew between round one and round seventeen. So when we have a stadium triple, let's say, or a finish line, like we will walk down there and look at it and say, okay, this is about fifty or you know. 45 to 50 feet or and or you'll look at it and be like okay this one's bigger than normal so like on average like a supercross triple is about 72 feet long and they try to keep them that way now they'll change the tranny of the takeoff um and that that'll that can be a different like trajectory of like either height or distance um i was never (laughs) that good at like you know reading stuff like uh, like Josh, phenomenal. He'd just go out and jump something first, first or second lap. Like I've seen him I do would, it in the desert. I've yeah, seen him yeah. Go I like, would. <laughs> I've been there at Zunis. dude. I swear, dude, I'll follow somebody. Like even that Supercross triple. You know, maybe not this one, but there's been jumps where I'm like, yeah, I've hit it a thousand times, but I'm still gonna follow Brayton off of it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, follow somebody off. You're of it. smart. I, I think part of it. <laughs> I think part of it is is I never play road as a kid. And I know like Josh played road way more than I did, I think. Um, So I didn't, I was always used to hitting stuff at race speed. So I didn't have like, how slow can I jump this jump and actually make it? I didn't have any like, you know, it was, it was either zero or a hero, right? Like I would follow or, you know, I could hit it at race speed. I didn't have that happy medium. Let's go hit and have fun and like jump these jumps and. And, um, so that's where I think I could have been better as, as a kid, you know, doing a little more play riding. So I was a little more free on the motorcycle. Like I was just race, race, race. So there's no whoops. <clears throat> there's no whoops in here noticeably like that, that, that in, um, the, the indoors is, is that's part of it, right? The, yeah. That's usually like the make or break section. You know, like if you're really good in the whoops, you can be mediocre on the rest of the track mm. and still be in the mix. You know, yep. a lot of times we'll set our bikes up for the whoops mainly because that's such an important section so like this uh i went out for the first practice yesterday and i had my full supercross set up and i realized none of the transitions are as steep as normal and uh it was kind of more of a rough choppy track than normal so i ended up switching to uh it's not motocross setup but it's much softer than we'd normally run in supercross because mm. you know you have to have your suspension so stiff for whoops because you're just hitting you know, walls that are 15 feet apart, that are three feet high, like curbs that are three feet high, as fast as you can go into them. So your suspension like has to be so stiff or else you'll, you know, you'll get like three or four in and your suspension will bottom out and then it'll just buck you straight over the bars. Right, so you basically have to set your suspension up for the way the whoops are or are not. Yeah, I mean, if there's, if there's big whoops, most of the time you're gonna see guys going stiffer with their suspension, but it doesn't turn good. Mm. You know, you want your bike to, to you know the the front forks to go down as you enter the corner and grip the dirt where if you go real stiff it makes your suspension if there's a little you know bump in the rut it could deflect and and pop over that rut and then you'll see guys tuck in the front and going down crazy yeah so this this weekend a softer setup might be a little better but the speeds are high so that's Mm. it's kind of crazy that you're saying they're going to be going five miles an hour faster overall that's kind of wild to think about yeah, no. It's, I mean, look. I mean, we from the peristyle down to basically right below us. Yeah, it's got a little dog leg in it, and you know, big single that you jump into the sand. But by the time you enter this bowl turn right below us here, like, like I would say at least five, like, yeah, five miles an hour faster than uh, average than compared to like if we were had this track in, you know, Anaheim Stadium for example, the floor space is smaller than this, so our straightaways, you know, aren't that long. Like the, the longest straightaway you would have at Anaheim would be from home plate to like either first first base or third base that's kind of your longest run and normally those are rhythm sections or or whoop you know whoops uh with a ton of combinations of what you know depending on what it is so it's a definitely it's this floor is much bigger so our speeds are going to be higher here yeah and it was crazy to being down there yesterday and being so used to seeing the pros out in the track always and then to see the difference of non-pros and people that and then really like those guys are going really slow and they're like scared <laughs> And you can kind of tell, and then when you guys are out there, you guys obviously make it look easier, but the perspective I had yesterday from being down there and watching the difference between pros and non-pros, it's like, holy shit. And like you said, Ryan, it's like from up here, the whoops and the section and whatever else, it looks mellow, but when you're down there, 
Going up that hill is steep as shit. No, it is steep. Yeah, it, our, your depth perception up here is completely different than when you get down there. Your eye, it plays tricks on you when you're up here. Like all the fans that are going to be sitting in the stadium tonight or any stadium watching Supercross race are like, it's it, when we have these VIP walks that come down at a normal Supercross where they bring some of the fans down for a VIP track walk. They're like, holy shit, how big are these whoops? And I'm like, oh, these are average. You know, I've, I've seen bigger ones. Yeah. And they're like, you know, they're, the kids will walk through them and they're up to their up to their chest. Yeah. You know, or a pair parents will walk through them and they're up to their waist yeah and you're like yeah no they're gnarly you'll lose a toddler in there yeah (laughs) well we have a couple questions that that are coming in in the chat and it seems you are so passionate about it still and one of the questions is if you miss this at all um do you miss the pressure of racing or anything else about lining up um you know i miss i miss a lot of the perks that come from racing (laughs) what are the perks (laughs) Uh, i mean Free, Other than a million dollars, yeah, celebrating <laughs> lots of free stuff, and I still, you know, but um, honestly, I um, I'm pretty involved now with with Yamaha and um, doing race day live now for you know like uh, live show today that will be like four and a half hours live. Um, my, the, to the question, no, I don't miss racing. Um, being that I'm able to still be here and be very involved. Um, I'd, I'd love to just hang out and see all, all the people that I basically grew up because this is where, I mean, we turned pro at, I think I was just 17. So from 17 to 27, um, they you know watched me all through my prime. Uh, so I still have tons of friends and things like that. Uh, so I, I love to be involved, but no, I, I don't miss the racing part. I don't miss the... The, the, the travel grind, you know, like these guys have been going for, uh, what, this is 32, this is like the race 32 or something. Isn't you that know? wild? You know, a couple races in between, but I think the, the biggest problem is, is but, or the biggest thing difference in our sport is than I think other sports is, is you know, like, for let's use NASCAR, for example, you're pretty versed on that. It's yep. like, you'll have guys come in and say, hey, we have a fifth place car tonight. And no matter how who's driving that car, if the car is a fifth place car, it's a fifth place car. Like where the rider here in in our scenario is much, it has way more influence on your overall finish than the motorcycle. Yeah. So no matter how you slice it, like yeah, if you're com- if you're feeling a little off, the bike setup's not on perfectly right, or whatever the case may be, like you we're expected to make up that difference with the motorcycle being a little bit off. Like that's it's it's so much more put on the rider yeah. than it is the machine. But I think it's interesting, and I like that you brought it up. So the traveling schedule, I mean, I travel a lot, you travel a lot, and it really does affect not only your body, your brain, you're tired, and then you have to perform. How do you get through that? Like, what what are the things that helps you stay grounded, I guess? I think for me, I just love it so much. Like, I've stepped away from the sport. I've tried to quit, Mm -hmm. and uh, it's just so fun to be here. Mm -hmm. And, like, as stressful as it is to race and be out there and, and know that, you know, things could go sideways at any point you know like injuries are a huge part of this sport yeah. and I'm getting a little older so like I'm a little more brittle and it's like I just got to stay off the ground but there's nothing like you know doing this getting mm-hmm. out here in front of the crowd and uh and, and you know it's put up or shut up yeah. when that 30 second board goes sideways and it's uh it's pretty amazing and for me and you know, I'm kind of in a different part of my career where if I have a great night everybody around me is psyched and if I have a subpar night everybody's like ah, hey get him next time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> good work tiger yeah well it's like we don't have to be here we get to be here and it's like keeping that mindset it helps a lot now speaking i want to know the injuries because that's always a good question what injuries do we have oh man i've i've racked up a few you know <laughs> i've uh i've broken my femur twice i've broken both pelvises i mean i've broken every limb multiple times and then like I've got a foot that I got compartment syndrome from uh, a crash back when I was 20 and I never regained feeling back in that foot and it's oh, wow. kind of fused you got a numb foot yeah yeah <laughs> what was that movie Club with Mr. Adam Deeds. Sandler Mr. Yeah. Deeds yeah, 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 foot. Foot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try that out on you later oh uh, you could get away with it <laughs> Yeah, I've stepped on a foot. Oh, no, I've been like, tickling uh, your, your foot all the time. Oh, stuck you- in the car door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've uh, walked home when I lived in Newport. I remember walking home, was talking to my neighbor, and uh, was didn't realize I was standing on a metal grate and uh, <laughs> just completely burned my foot off. It was a hot summer day. I got back, got walked home, got in the shower, looked at the bottom of my foot. Oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, no, it's, uh, but, you know, that, that happened from me trying to do a backflip for X Games. I was supposed to come here in 2010 to do X Games here. Uh, I think the year Josh Grant won. I was you were trying do... to do freestyle? 
Yeah, I was gonna do. Uh, I was gonna do supercross. Uh, they had a supercross race, and then I was backflipping for speed and style. Right, the and, speed and uh, style. Yeah, and then that's crazy. Yeah, speed and style's hurt. done now, right? Uh, yeah, ish. I mean, I think ish. they still do it. They don't do it at X Games. I feel like speed and style. Correct me if I'm wrong. Was like it came around when like the freestyle that group of freestyle guys got old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can say that. Yeah, but then but then you had like Pastrana, who was still like if Pastrana showed up, it was kind of like it was over Game for everybody. Over. Yeah, because uh, he's still fast. You know. Yeah, is it crazy? Like that. His I remember his dad. It must have been a documentary, and you guys would obviously relate to that father. And his dad was tearing because all he ever wanted was his son to be a racer, and he was the complete opposite. Opposite. <laughs> Yeah, How do you no, think he I mean, would have done if he had just focused and tried to do a full race career? Would you think it would have worked out? I think, I, yeah, I do. I, I think his height would have ultimately probably been uh, hindered him in the end. Yeah. Like when, 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 when. How when, tall is he? He's. I, I, Travis has got to be over. Four? Yeah, he's tall, yeah. six something. Like, and I think like. Um, as speed started to really progress there, I know like he's won some 250 races and things like that, but I think as speed, like for instance, like when Ricky was kind of on his way out and then James stepped in and that pace really elevated, I don't know how, you know, that would have worked in his favor with, with being the height, you know, cause he's a, he's a tall dude on a dirt bike. He's a very tall guy on a dirt his, bike. He's a dangerous man. I yes, stay away from is. him. There's it, certain people I stay away from. Jeff Tremaine and Travis Pastrana are, uh, in my top five. They're going to egg you on to do something, right? I stay the fuck away from yeah. those guys. Yeah. <laughs> Pastrana's raw speed, though, at his peak, was pretty insane. His problem was, is I think, with like you said, with his height, like the consistency. Yeah. You know, like he would he would just come into something and have zero respect for it. <laughs> exactly. Lay it over and, and then like just barely dab his foot and then he'd have a torn ACL because he was so big. You yeah, know? yeah, so yeah. I think, but he, uh, he probably would have had a championship. I like the zero respect for it. <laughs> No, I mean, go back and watch some old videos of, of TP, man. Like, he'll hit some stuff, and you're like, dude, I would never hit it that fast. <laughs> <laughs> like, we come into whoops, and we try to set our, you know, front wheel on at least the, the second or calculated decisions. Third whoop. You watch him, and, you know, he was tall, so the bike could get squarely on him, and he wouldn't set his front wheel down sometimes to, like, the sixth whoop coming in. Like, just, uh, yeah, a whole different approach <laughs> than what we have. Different bowl game. You guys keep people keep asking, is Deegan gonna win? Everyone keeps asking, not Brian Deegan. It's if everyone here is Danger, Danger Boy, Boy gonna win. Brian Deegan hasn't stopped winning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's still winning. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's a good that's he's a, winning through his kids now, right? Yeah. Too. yeah. I don't know. It's gonna be a good one, man. Like Jet is I mean, sorry, Hunter is uh he's on it right now. Shmoda's on it. There's so many guys in that class that are on it, but Hayden is that kid. He's mm. he's got that thing like Ryan Ryan had growing up. Like when you get into these pressure situations and some people might tense up, that kid's right arm goes down further and he just pins it. And you know what I mean? Like he steps up in these pressure situations. He seems to be thriving on it. So round two um, finished in Chicago for the 250s. Hunter Lawrence claimed first. So that's one and one. Uh, ahead of Joe Shimoda, two and two. And then Hayden... Deegan, 3-3 three, three for the overall win. Um, so it's it's between those three guys, right? And correct me if I'm wrong, are all three of those guys eligible too for the 500000 Yes. Wow. So we just have a full slap bank today Yep. is money all around. Yeah, no, those three riders have – they're eligible in the points you know, situation that depend on – it's winners ta winner takes all essentially. So whoever wins tonight – um, you know, is more than likely going to end up with that uh, five hundred thousand in the in the SMX championship. Who are you going with for two fifty? Man, that's such a hard one. You know, um, I'd love to see Joe do it. Honestly, I, I, I all of them kind of like all three. I, I don't. That is not a good answer. It's not a good answer, but I don't. I, He's I, being so political over here. I am. Okay, so let me pick one. I, I'll go. I'll go with sushi. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go sushi. All right, Deegan. He's gonna, go. he's gonna launch it into the crowd too. Yeah. You know? Oh, that's another. You think he's gonna ghost because his father famously he ghost rode, ghost whipped his bike off the finish. Off the finish here in the Coliseum, many many moons ago, and uh, the moon that will be over it tonight is gonna be shining on Hayden Deegan to see if he wins and go. go. He's everybody he's expects him to whip it. I love seeing the cockiness in him. I think it's great. I think the sport needs it. I, I love it, man. I, you know, it's one of those things, like, he, there's a good chance that he, he won't win, but that kid is, uh, 
he's so driven and he's got to know that this is like you know how iconic it would be for him to win this event that i know he's he's thinking about it a little extra yeah like you said like his 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 little bit of his arrogance or cockiness like i I think that's one thing that we need more of in our sport like jets bringing his side of it everything that he's bringing to the table that is that is great for our sport but also too like um, I think one thing our sport m- is missing is more characters. Like we, you know, like um, I wasn't a very good character. Um, well, no, not like that. You were just a very, um, you were. I mean, I hate to even throw it that way, but like a Max Verstappen, you were. Yep. You were a winner, and people didn't like you because you were winning, and you didn't give a shit because you were winning. <laughs> is that like? Is that something to do with the industry too, though? Where like you want to have a voice and you want it's the kind of an un- it's kind of an it's but, an un- underlying rule not rule but like I feel like we're all developed to to say the right things and to do the right things as as at least the era we came up into now I think with social and how everything is like um, people are looking for more organic more you you know like really you who you are um, and I think that's what's different you know I feel like there's way more leeway people are okay with with you know people uh riders really saying what they want to say instead of living inside this box and i think that's what we need more of you know we need more of that ww you know well no it goes back wrestling type even like like ufc like britney's being a part of the ufc organization from the the beginning and i think that maybe not so pre-conor maybe a little bit but conor mcgregor created this like this it was larger than life and the fuck you and the way that he dressed and the back talking yep. and he created this you create around a it character you create like an entertainment value so exactly not only just being talented but having that like wow factor like that's a superstar there's something even like style benders the same way like he kind of has this they, a lot of them are they, it's, they it's, are it's, and it's, it's smart to do that but they've played that up now and yeah. it's like you tune in for the weigh-ins or the press conferences yeah. and it's a fucking comic show yeah. yep and i think <laughs> that's a, like with with jet and with hayden like they're they're kind of they're pioneers that in our sport you know it's not going to be the same as UFC I don't think it can be no, it's, all, it's, be. All, it's all different it should all have its own little you know category and I think those two are really doing a good job at like you know bridging that gap into you know b- building a bigger fan base outside of just who you are in the stadium but then it goes back to selling seats in the stadium you yep, guys are in a yep. new city every week and yep. you're in big arenas and it's all about selling tickets out that's you know? right and that's what those guys are doing all right so in Chicago Jet um, Jet finished first, Jet Lawrence, Ken Roxon finished second, and then Chase finished third. What's going to happen today for the million dollar race, guys? <sighs> Who's taking it? Mm. Dude, I don't know. It's going to be, I don't know. It's hard to bet against Jet as good as he's been, but I mean, those other guys, like Chase is on it, and I don't know. Can't I? There's something that makes me think Kenny might have something for these guys. Like, yeah, for him, the pressure is not on him. Mm-hmm. If he pulls this off, like the upside for him and his team, like you know, he's on a Suzuki, a bike that people have written off for a while now. And uh, yep. why is that? Well, they haven't changed it in a really. It hasn't long been time. developed, you know, really since Stu. Yeah. Um, you know, it's one of the only bikes still with a Kickstarter on it. Really? Um, yeah. Which you know, it's that's what we all grew up on. It's it's. It's actually probably better than a than electric start in in a way because it you know it won't break, but from our standpoint, from our racing, you fall in a turn, you got to start your bike. It's it could be you know a second or two seconds that you're trying to start it. Yeah. Where, ele- where an electric start makes that up. So, um, no, I think Kenny has a, a great opportunity too. But wh- I'm really interested to see who's going to shine with this because this track's gonna get blue groove, and we haven't seen that. Jet hasn't raced a 450 on true like blue groove hard packs um you know track material um chase as we know is is look was looking forward to the supercross you know getting back supercross suspension being back on you know in, in a stadium uh and then like 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 josh said like kenny's kind of like he's flying under the radar um and last week at chicago you know he went uh he almost won the thing so what happened there though like what what the, the, the bit of controversy did he why, why did he why did he let him pass i don't know i mean i have my opinions on it i think uh I think he was trying to figure out how to uh, skew the the points in a way. I don't think, I think, and also to figure that out, like, I if he would have me- mentioned it prior to the race, the team would have said, "Hey, it's it doesn't work out like that." So I believe this all happened while he was racing. Yeah, and 
you know, Kenny was able to bridge that gap. I mean, I can't count laps, let alone figure out what the points are. Um, because, like, in, in while racing, yeah, that's a lot of numbers going, going back right? to in your head. Going back to a NASCAR, you've got a spotter and you got someone in your head talking to you. You're yep. talking to the team manager. Yep. You guys don't have any of that. Athlete. We have we have no outside got a communication. Sign. Yeah, yeah, we have a pit board. <laughs> um, so him to be able to do that math while racing, like, I, I mean, d- definitely slowed him down. Um, you know, and I think that, you know, the other thing that people are asking well did he slow while he was doing that math did he he obviously had to slow down and then at that point kenny was all over him and he let him did he let him by does that was that the problem or was he really trying to figure out the points in the situation i think he was it didn't work out um i think it just made more more a little bit of controversy um i think it made the show bigger coming into this weekend because of what we had last weekend at chicago you know that's not normal for guys to let guys by he got it he got a talking to from the ama for it yeah warning he he had a warning yeah there's a rule in the rule book that you're not allowed to affect the outcome of the race as a racer if you're a betting man yeah oh so maybe there was a little vegas thing i don't know there's not any betting in our sport i know they've been trying to get it in um, there should be. Yeah, why not? Let's but it's go. hard because it is like, like you know, with that situation, you can affect it a lot of years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So team sport in a I, sense. I think, yeah. I think it was more of the gesture, right? Because who's to say if you let somebody by, like, yeah. well, no, he was just faster. Well, but he admitted when, it on the podium yeah. was the problem. Like, he's like, oh, yeah, I was trying to work the points out in my head, blah, 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 you know, big brain moves and let him by. That was where I That's think, where he got in trouble because. Well, I think he admitted it at yeah. that point, right? Yeah. So I think uh, they probably would have just had a talking to him and maybe still a warning if that was the case but like josh said if you would have just like kind of like acted like he fell over or like you know like here you go like but he took his hands off the bar and waved him by and that's where the warning came and then he also admitted it (laughs) (laughs) who's gonna win ryan villapoto oh i'd love to see kenny win um i would um yeah let's go kenny hill uh, it'd be cool to see Kenny win. I know that uh, you know Larry Brooks and that whole team's been working hard to make it, and it's the underdog story, right? Mm-hmm. But I, I don't know if I can really. The way Jet looked yesterday, yeah, you know, I think my money's on Jet. And then I'm also just curious to see how Cooper Webb uh, does on more of a Supercross setting, because uh, I know like the last couple of races have been more like a motocross race, and right. he was kind of in my boat. He had Supercross suspension, and it yeah. wasn't really ideal. So, you know, Cooper Webb's on the new Yamaha. He's back with Monster Energy. And uh, I'm curious to see if he can turn it on and, and be a factor and, and be, you know, a top guy in the class. I, th- I know by January I, I would bet that he will be, but we'll see if he can do it this soon. Wow. Brittany, Danny, any last questions for these guys before we let them go? No, I think you, you covered all of them. This was great. I mean, I want, I, I want the Cinderella story. I want Josh to win this one. <laughs> hey, if Josh take the millie hey, home, if yeah. Josh you yeah. win ten percent on the bottom line, that's yeah. Uh, yeah. That, <laughs> that that's rat rule is in full effect, guys. Ryan, Josh, thank you so much for being a part of this. This uh, this it's beautiful. Like what a yep. beautiful morning to be sitting above the uh, Supercross track at the Coliseum for maybe one last time. That's right. No, it's it's a, it's an amazing amazing feeling to be here. Glad to be here. Glad to be on the show. Um, you know, I might we might catch you down there by that monster banner down there in the grass in a in a speedo. Dingo, <laughs> yeah, 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 right yeah, there, yeah, 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 yeah. Watching the race, right there, I got speedo, speedo one right now. Get your lawn chair Waving out, the flag. Get your lawn chair <laughs> out and a cooler of uh, unleash the beast. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be an awesome night, guys. Josh, thank you so much.